My dear confraternity members, we, we continue this morning our examination of the meaning of the words found in the little office of the Immaculate Conception. And so today we take the hour of tears. And the hymn for tears is as follows. Hail Solomon's throne, pure ark of the law, fair rainbow and bush which the patriarch saw. Hail Gideon's fleece, hail blossoming rod, Samson's sweet honeycomb, portal of God. Well fitting it was that a son so divine should preserve from all touch of original sin, nor suffer by smallest defect to be stained, that mother whom he for himself had ordained. Amen. Now, especially in the first two stanzas of this hymn, we find various Old Testament references. So the, the hymn begins with the words, Hail Solomon's throne, pure ark of the law, fair rainbow and bush, which the patriarch saw. So we have four different uh, things in the Old Testament that are referred to. The throne of Solomon, the ark of the covenant, the rainbow, and the burning bush on Mount Horeb. So let's go through each of these and how they foreshadow and apply to our Blessed Mother. So Solomon's throne. Solomon's throne was a magnificent work of art. It was carved ivory covered in gold. And the um, Bible describes in detail the throne that Solomon had made for himself. Now Solomon, of course, was... You can just leave him there. Solomon's throne, of course, was very, uh, so Solomon himself was gifted with tremendous wisdom. And so he built the temple, but he also built a palace for himself and he built his throne. And this referring the throne, comparing it to Our Lady, is not just the throne itself, but what it represented. And what it represented was the wisdom of Solomon because people came from far and near to hear his judgments. Solomon sat on his throne and rendered decisions, taught, gave judgments. And we read about how the Queen of the South, the Queen of Saba, came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. She didn't believe what she had been told, that how glorious this king was and how wise and how brilliant she didn't believe it. And so she traveled a great distance and came to Jerusalem to visit Solomon, this queen. And after she visited him and listened to his wisdom and his judgments and interviewed him, she said, what I've been told isn't even half the picture of how wise this king is. So why do we compare Our Lady to the throne of Solomon? because Our Lady is called the seat of wisdom. She held within her, within her womb for nine months, God himself, and he communicated to her his wisdom. So our Blessed Mother is wise as Solomon, wiser than Solomon. And so we begin with that reference to the throne of Solomon. And then it goes on, pure ark of the law. Now again, the... Ark of the Covenant was carved out of acacia wood that was a kind of like cedar, a wood that's not going to decay. So it was carved out of this wood and then it was covered within and without by gold, pure gold. And it was in with this Ark of the Covenant that the tables of the law, the tablets that had the Ten Commandments written on them were reposed. So Our Lady contained again within herself our Divine Lord within her womb. So she was at that time, she was the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant was um, represented God's presence among his people. On top of the Ark of the Covenant, there was what was called the propitiatory and was an image of two angels with their wings extended over the ark, 
and a cloud would come down and God would speak to Moses. He would reveal his will there in the temple at the Ark of the Covenant. And Moses would often go and pray before the Ark of the Covenant to know what God's will was. And so certainly Our Lady, containing within her womb our Divine Lord, shows forth to the world the presence of God, who again manifested his presence through the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament. And then it says, Fair rainbow and bush which the patriarch saw. So the rainbow is referring to the fact that after the great flood, God created the rainbow. He put the rainbow in the sky and he said to Noah that this was a sign of his covenant, his promise to the human race that he would never again destroy all mankind by means of a flood. Nothing like took place with the deluge. So the rainbow is a symbol of peace between God and man. It is a symbol of forgiveness on the part of God, of the sins of men who repent. And again, is a sign of peace between sinful man and our Creator, Almighty God. So Our Lady is compared to the rainbow, because just as the rainbow symbolizes that forgiveness, so our Blessed Mother is the Mother of Mercy, and she obtains for us God's mercy and forgiveness. And then it makes reference to the bush which the patriarch saw, the patriarch here referring to Moses, and the bush, of course, was the burning bush that was burning but wasn't consumed. And it's interesting that the Holy Mother Church uses this bush in her liturgy Uh, in the office of Our Lady, one of the feasts of Our Lady, or a couple of them, in the Divine Office, to refer to Our Lady. And the words are, Rubum quam viderat moises in combustum, conservatum agnovimus tuam mirabilem virginitatum sancta dei genitrix. And I, I don't like the translation this book gives, but it's a fair translation. It says, As Moses saw the bush, which was not burnt, so we have seen thy wonderful virginity preserved, O Holy Mother of God. So she became a mother. She bore within her womb the incarnate word. She gave birth to him without losing her virginity. So just like the bush was burning but wasn't consumed, so our Blessed Mother became a mother without any taint to her virginity. So let me reread the entire first stanza. Hail Solomon's throne, pure ark of the law, fair rainbow and bush which the patriarch saw. So four different things or events of the Old Testament that foreshadow Our Lady. The next stanza gives three different events in the Old Testament or things. Hail Gideon's fleece, Hail blossoming rod, Samson's sweet honeycomb, portal of God. Now, Gideon's rod, Gideon was one of the judges. Probably Gideon and Samson, the two most famous of the judges. After Joshua led the chosen people into the promised land, after he died, because Joshua ruled the people, the successor of Moses, and after Joshua died, The people were governed by judges. And these judges were not like kings. Later on they would have a king, first Saul and then David and then Solomon. But the judges were men that were simple common men who were inspired by God to rally the Jewish people to defeat their enemies when there was a need. And they were just governed by the elders of their tribes. But Gideon was a very interesting one of these judges because he was commanded by God to gather an army and to defeat defeat the Madianites who were encroaching on their lands and were attacking them. And Gideon felt, well, who am I? So he wanted to make sure that this was God's will. So he says, don't be offended, Almighty God, if I ask for a sign. And he took some fleece 
from a lamb, and he put it on the floor. And he said, if tomorrow morning when I get up in the morning, the fleece is wet with dew, but the ground around it is dry, then I'll take that as a sign that I indeed am to lead an army against the Midianites. Next morning he woke up, he went, the fleece was soaked with dew, so much so he wrung it out and filled a vessel with the dew in the fleece. And then he said to God, don't be offended if I ask for one more sign. If tomorrow morning I wake up and the fleece is dry and the ground around it is covered with dew, then I'll know for sure that you want me to lead this army. And that's exactly what happened. And of course Gideon went on to defeat a far superior force of the Madianites with a very small band of men, relatively speaking. So Our Lady is referred to as Gideon's Fleece. So how could we apply this to Our Lady? Let me just read a section here. After relating in in this particular book that explains the little office of the Immaculate Conception, after explaining the story that I just gave you, it says, Clearly these remarkable happenings in connection with the Fleece was a sign that Israel was to be saved from its enemies. Now Mary's arrival on earth was a sign that salvation to mankind was near at hand. So it was a sign, just like the fleece that was wet or then was dry was a sign that God really wanted Gideon to lead this army. So our Blessed Mother's coming into the world was like the fleece, it foreshadowed the salvation of mankind. The fathers of the early church say that the dew falling on the fleece is a figure of the incarnation and of the mysterious descent of the second person of the Blessed Trinity into Mary's chaste womb. Hence we must not be surprised when we find these words in the office for the Feast of the Circumcision addressed to the God-man. When thou wast born of a virgin, in a wonderful manner. Then the words of Scripture were fulfilled, like rain thou hast come down upon the fleece to redeem the human race. So it's interesting that the church uses again these this incident to refer to rain coming down on the fleece as our Lord coming into the world through Mary. Then the next one is blossoming rod. Now, at the time of Moses, He wanted to show, or God told him, to have a representative of each of the twelve tribes bring a rod, that is a stick, and they were to be laid before the Ark of the Covenant in the temple. And God would manifest who was to be his priest, his high priest. And they wrote their names on these rods. And Aaron... The brother of Moses is the one who had a rod for the tribe of Levi. And the next morning, Aaron's rod had blossomed. There were leaves that came out of the rod, and the others were still just dry sticks. And then almonds came out of the um, rod of Aaron. So it it gave forth buds and uh, leaves, and then it gave forth almonds. So it was, a, it was a sign that God had chosen Aaron to be the priest. And Our Lady's here referred to as a blossoming rod because she has been chosen among all the women of the earth to be the one that would bring forth the Messiah. And the next uh, figure is Samson's sweet honeycomb. Now Samson was another one of those judges like Gideon. And of course, we all know of Samson's strength. Samson had this extraordinary strength. In the book of Judges, chapter 14, it says, Then Samson went down with his father and mother to Thamnata. And then when when they were come to the vineyards of the town, behold, a young lion met him, raging and roaring. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, and he tore the lion, as he would have torn a kid in pieces. And after some days returning, behold, there was a swarm of bees in the mouth of the lion and a honeycomb. 
So here is one interpretation of this event. The tribe of Judah was represented by a lion. Our Lady came of this tribe. Before Mary appeared on the earth, the tribe was dead spiritually. The striking contrast between Mary's sinlessness and the wickedness of the people around her bears a resemblance to the sweet honeycomb found in the mouth of the dead lion. And of course, in our prayers to Our Lady, we refer to her as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So the honeycomb, the sweet honeycomb, in the mouth of the lion that Samson found was an image to him or a sign to him of what he was called to do to to rescue his people to save them from their enemies and our lady is like this sweet honeycomb and then finally it refers to her as a portal of God so we say that our lady in the litany of our lady is the gate of heaven the gate of heaven she is the mediatrix between us, sinful mankind, and our divine Lord, our Redeemer. She takes our prayers to him. She intercedes for us. So she is, as it were, the portal of God, the portal of heaven. Now the last two stanzas are do not need an explanation. They don't have uh, references to the Old Testament. Well, fitting it was that a son so divine should preserve from all touch of original sin, nor suffer by smallest defect to be stained the mother whom he for himself had ordained. How fitting it was that he should preserve her from all stain of sin, she who was to be his mother. So let me then conclude by reading the entire hymn from Tears and just reflect upon it and the meaning of the words of these various things or events in the Old Testament. Hail Solomon's throne, pure ark of the law, fair rainbow and bush, which the patriarch saw. Hail Gideon's fleece, hail blossoming rod, Samson's sweet honeycomb, portal of God. Well, fitting it was that a son so divine should preserve from all touch of original sin, nor suffer by smallest defect to be stained, that mother whom he for himself had ordained. Amen. Let us now kneel for our closing prayers.